this lab, you will be determining the limiting reagent of the reaction. So this is the reaction that you will perform. You'll take some calcium nitrate tetrahydrate, so four waters are complex to this, react it with some sodium phosphate. There's 12 waters attached to this. And that will react to form calcium phosphate. So if you notice the state of the calcium phosphate, the calcium phosphate is actually a solid. So it will be a precipitate. While your calcium nitrate is dissolved in water, it's aqueous. And your sodium phosphate is dissolved in water, it's aqueous. So this dissociates into its ions. This dissociates into its ions. The calcium ion and the phosphate ion actually precipitate out. If you consult your solubility table, you'll find that this is not soluble. And then you get sodium nitrate. All nitrates are soluble, so that remains in water, dissolved. And you have water to balance out this chemical equation. So the purpose of this reaction is to determine how you can maximize the yield of your calcium phosphate. So if you're a good chemist, you should get a very high percent yield of cal calcium phosphate. But another thing that limits how much of this, if you want this to be a maximal yield, one thing that limits this is the amount of reactants that react to form the product. So in this case, either one of this reactant, calcium nitrate or sodium phosphate, will be limiting it's going to put the limit on how much of this gets actually made. So we call that a limiting reagent. Another way to think about this is you have this much calcium phosphate solid that you will make. Which one of these two reactants gets used up first? Is it this reactant? If it's this reactant, then this is the limiting reagent. And that becomes the excess reagent. Or the flip side could occur, and all of this reactant, the sodium phosphate, gets used up first to make your calcium phosphate. In that case, this sodium phosphate is your limiting reagent or limiting reactant, leaving this reactant in excess. So that would be your excess reagent or your excess reactant. So in this experiment, you're going to weigh out approximately one gram of calcium nitrate reacted with approximately one gram of sodium phosphate, you will get this precipitate, and you can see how much of this precipitate you get out. The more of this precipitate, the better. But obviously, you're limited by which one of these gets used up first. Just because you add more of this, or if you have three moles, according to the balanced chemical equation, reacting with two moles of this, that does not mean that this is limiting and this is excess. You have to do stoichiometry. And from that stoichiometry, you should determine which one of these is limiting and which one is excess, provided you weigh out one gram of this and one gram of that. So you'll do the stoichiometry, and then you'll follow the stoichiometry up with an actual reaction to, de to, the, to determine the actual percent yield. Don't forget your percent yield. is your actual yield, how much you will weigh out of this precipitate after you filter it and remove the water, that divided by the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is how much of this you should get out based on stoichiometric calculations. So stoichiometric calculations, canceling out units, will give you grams of this, but you can never really achieve the theoretical yield simply because some of the precipitate may leak out, you don't collect all of it, some of it leaks. So many different things happen. We're not robots to achieve the theoretical yield based on stoichiometric calculations. But we can try to get close. The closest we get would be the actual yield. We multiply this by 100 to get our percent yield. So we won't get percent yields of 100% simply because, like I stated before, you'll never get 100% of the precipitate out of the fil filter paper. Some of it evaporates, some of it spills. 
when you weigh this out, you don't collect it or pour all of it into the beaker. So many things happen. But we want to try to get close to the percent yield uh, to 100% as possible. Really good chemists can get you know, 95, 96, 97 percent yield. So this is the uh, reaction you'll perform. And our goal is to try to get a respectable percent yield and also determine the limiting reactant from this reaction that's going to be performed in the lab. So let's begin our reaction. I weighed out 1.070 grams of calcium nitrate. So notice it's not exactly 1.00 grams, but it's close enough. So I will take that and I will pour it, or actually dump it, since it's a solid, into this Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, so that is my calcium nitrate. So the, it's very crystalline, and it may be hard to get out. So if it's hard to get out, you can take some DI water and pour the remnants in, rather sticky. And you can just take some water and force that into... To facilitate solubilization, I'll add 50 mils of DI water to my calcium nitrate, and I'll stir it up. Okay? It may not get into solution. It eventually will. So you can use a glass rod to sort of facilitate uh, um, all of that calcium nitrate to get into solution. I may have some particulates here and there, but with enough stirring, you should be able to get that all dissolved in water. Okay, remember, all nitrates are soluble, and that also will include calcium nitrate. All right, so that's my first reactant, the calcium nitrate. My second reactant is the sodium phosphate. All right, I weighed out 1.045 grams of the sodium phosphate. Again, kind of close to one gram. As long as I uh, note in my notebook what I weighed out, I'm fine. So here, I'll put this into the second Erlenmeyer flask. And this one goes kind of smoothly. Okay. I can also put 50 mils of DI water here to get this into solution. If you look at your solubility table in your textbook, um, sodium phosphate should be soluble in water. That is 50 mils. I'll pour it in here. And I'll do a quick stirring. And I'll utilize a stir bar to get that into solution. Okay, so I got my sodium phosphate into solution using the stirring rod. So now I'm going to mix my calcium nitrate and my sodium phosphate together. So it goes into one beaker, my sodium phosphate, and then my calcium nitrate goes into the same beaker. Okay, so I have a cloudy solution. So I have now generated a precipitate. My goal now, out of 1.07 grams of calcium nitrate and 1.045 grams of sodium phosphate, my goal is to collect this calcium phosphate precipitate, find out my limiting reagent, and find out the percent yield. So it's going to be a goal or a challenge of mine to maximize and try to get out all of this calcium phosphate precipitate out, because notice it's still very wet. So after I poured the two reactants into this beaker, I stirred it with my glass rod. Keep the glass rod into the beaker. And you want to let this go for a gentle boil for about 15 minutes. Okay, A gentle boil for about 15 minutes. And if you can zoom in, a gentle boil means you have some bubbles forming, but you don't have vigorous bubble formation. You just have just um, a couple of bubbles here and there. You want to get this hot, but not boiling hot. This will help facilitate evaporation of excess water but it will also help facilitate get, getting a better precipitate. So continue to stir. If you do see any buildup on the sides, I like to generally just put some water on the sides to get that back in. Okay, so you want to do this for about 15 minutes, a gentle boil. So one thing you want to do in this lab is to make your filter paper. So we have our filter paper, but we need to 
make it into a funnel. So in order to do that, we will take this filter paper and fold it in a half like this. And fold it in a quarter like this. Okay, and if I unfold it, now I've got it into fourths. Okay, so these are my bevels. Um, some people actually fold this a little bit more. So I'll let you decide if you want to fold it so that you can get more bevels. And this is going to go on the funnel. And we will collect the precipitate on this filter paper. Before you make or do anything with regards to collecting the precipitate, take your filter paper, take an evaporating dish, and weigh them. See here after about 15 minutes or so. Um, I took it out and I let it cool for about a couple of minutes and you can see, um, I don't know if you can zoom in here, we do have a deposit at the bottom and a little bit of the supernatant. So we want to try to collect this and we will collect that using that filter paper filtration apparatus. Now the next part comes into actual acquisition or collection of the precipitate. In order to do that, we will take an Erlenmeyer flask and we will hook it to a vacuum line. So this is available um, on your lab bench or lab station. And so here's the vacuum. You're going to turn it and that's going to pull a vacuum and hopefully suck out all of the water leaving you with a dry precipitate. So I'm putting this over a beaker because uh, just to get it balanced. All right. And so the size of your Erlenmeyer flask with your sidearm may vary. Okay, so you may have a big one or a large one. Um, it doesn't matter. This rubber tubing is something that you will have to attach. So I just basically attach this here to the sidearm of this Erlenmeyer flask. Okay, so I'm just putting it over here so that I can get a good balance. Um, you may not have to do that for your lab. I have here a funnel. So uh, your funnel may be glass. And now here is the filter paper that I used. So I'm just going to put it here. This is where uh, a partner may help. Just wet it. Before I do that, you may, as per the protocol, just put a paper clip between the Erlenmeyer flask and your filter. Your filter may be glass, so everyone may have different size funnels. I'm sorry, your funnel may be glass. So I put my filter paper in. I'm going to wet it so that it stays in there. I wetted my filter paper. Okay, and all of that water has come out through here. I've not turned on my vacuum yet, but I will eventually. So now let's get my precipitate out and let's begin the filtration. So I got some of my precipitate out here and we're ready to put it through the filtrate. I did something a little different. I had a significant amount of supernatant, that top liquid portion. So I decanted, decanted is a fancy word for poured, some of it out. Some of it I just you know, I took out using this pipette. Some of it I just poured out using here. So all of this stuff is just supernatant. I can set that aside. All right. And now I'm going to pour this here. I want to get all of this precipitate in here as dry as possible. So first I'll pour it in. I'm going to slowly turn on the vacuum. Okay, slowly. You should hear a hissing sound. And there you see it going. I'm going to pour some more in here. I'm going to pour the rest in. Now, I should admit that in some of my labs, I let the students, um, if their vacuum filtration didn't work, I let them filter by gravity overnight. And then I would come back the next morning and weigh out the precipitate. So if your vacuum filtration system doesn't work for whatever reason or it's taking too long beyond the three hours, I may let uh, you uh, just... Uh, do it by gravity overnight. If you have a tight vacuum and a tight seal, this should go pretty fast, but sometimes due to the equipment we have in our lab, uh, we don't get tight seals. This thing at the bottom is called a filtrate. Obviously this thing at the top that we are collecting is the precipitate. So this is the filtrate that we will use to test which is the limiting reactant and which is the excess reactant. So that's an important point. 
Okay, so whatever flows through out here and is solubilized and contained in this filtrate, that's going to be my excess. Why is it my excess? Because whatever is in excess reacted here and came out through my filtrate. Whatever is limiting reacted here, formed my precipitate, and there is no excess because it's limiting. So let me repeat that again. Of our two reactants, the excess reactant, or the reactant that's going to be in excess, will remain in our filtrate because it's in excess. The one that's limiting all went to form this precipitate. So let me turn off this vacuum and let me show Honoré. This is the white precipitate of calcium phosphate. Okay. We usually like to wash the precipitate with some cold water making it nice and clean here. So here's some, a beaker of water in an ice bath. So it should be nice and cold. I'll wash it here. Just a couple of sprinkles. Now, instead of letting it go by gravity, I'll put in, or I will apply a little bit of vacuum. So we don't have a great seal here. And because we don't have a great seal, it's gonna go drop by drop by drop. So we'll let that go drop by drop you want to do this a couple of times with some cold water. And also what this water does, it washes out any excess reagent. While, uh, while this is finished, washing the precipitate, we can test the filtrate. So this is after washing with some cold water. I am going to take this out. Be very careful, touch it with your fingertips. You don't want your precipitate, your valuable sample to be contaminated with all your fingers and dirt and fingerprints. And I'm going to put it here on this evaporating dish. Okay, it's still very wet, as you can see here. Wet. So I'm going to put this here on the hot plate. Be very careful. You don't want the filter paper to burn. So maybe put it on low heat. So maybe level one. Everybody's hot plate is going to be different. So maybe level one or level two on a hot plate. And that's just to get out that residual water. So while you're doing that, it may be a good time to actually test your filtrate. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. Take out this paper clip. This is the filtrate or the flow through from filtering my precipitate or collecting my precipitate. Now we will use this material to test which is my excess and which is my limiting reagent. Remember, what did we react? We reacted calcium nitrate with sodium phosphate. Once you have dried your precipitate, and figured out its weight, way by difference. So the excess reagent, either sodium phosphate or calcium nitrate, flew through your precipitate, went through the funnel and into your filtrate. So what you wanna do is split your filtrate into two equal volumes and test. So you're gonna test one filtrate with saturated sodium phosphate, five to 10 drops, look for a precipitate. And then the other part of the filtrate, you're going to test with 5 to 10 drops of calcium nitrate. So one of them should form precipitate, one of them should form and stay in solution and not form a precipitate. So whichever one forms a precipitate versus whichever one does not form the precipitate should tell you which reactant is going to be excess or limiting. Okay, so one of these is an excess, one of these is limiting. So the limiting is going to react with your excess, and the excess reactant is the one that flowed through into your filtrate. So that's your final procedure to do this lab. Don't forget to dry your precipitate, weigh it by difference, don't forget to test if your reactant, which one is gonna be limited or excess. Clean up properly after you're done, be tidy, and stay safe and have fun in the lab.